All right, guys, what's going on? This is Shifty here, and um, real quickly, I want to explain to you um, a few things with ZBrush. Um, first of all, I'm going to explain um, using Dynamesh and the repercussions of it. Um, some of you may remember this little uh, this little bit I did a while ago for the thrust recruitment. Um, I did, in fact, make this using Dynamesh, but the problem is, as you can see, it's not all it doesn't have good topology and for those of you who don't know what topology is it's um it's basically your polygon count the uh, arrangement of polygons so uh, what we have right now is over 200,000 or 200k polygons which is by no means animation friendly so what you can do to um to um fix this there's a few things you can do you can go to a program such as 3D Coat and perform retopology there, or you can do it directly inside ZBrush. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to do it inside of ZBrush, and it's really simple. And I'll even show you UV mapping. So let's just get right into this. So once you have your finished sculpt or midway sculpt, once you want to go into high poly um, sculpting, um, basically what you want to go into is your subtool palette, and then we're going to duplicate this. And once we have our duplicate. We're gonna close out subtools and go into our geometry. And once I close all of these, you're gonna see if you're in four or six, it'll be Z remesher. If you're in anything lower, I believe four or four is the first version to have this. But you go to QR mesher, and I'm just gonna lower the polygon count down to about up. I'll, I'll put it at I I guess 10k. 10k it should work. I'm gonna hit QR mesh and. As you can see up here, there's a um, ZBrush is running an algorithm which um, rearranges the polygons and uh, inevitably lowers the count. Um, you can see it's relatively quick. Um, it's already halfway done, um, which should be done within the next couple seconds. Yep, you can see it's almost done, and it's relatively quick for um, how long it could normally take you. Say you did it in something with, say you did this in Maya. Um, this wouldn't be such a quick process but now you can see we have our um, our low poly model now obviously there's going to it's not going to be perfect so what you can do I'm just going to close holes and you can see we now have our uh, our mesh so. so now that we have this it's obviously nothing like our original sculpt um, if we went into this you could see has quite a quite a bit of detail that's missing from the uh, from this model, which is our good topology. Uh, the simplest way around this is instead of redoing all of the sculpting, is to use the project option, and the project is in your geometry tab, which is where we're going to be doing most of our work. So I actually no, uh, project is in your. Uh, subtool palette so what you want to do is project all and basically what this does is it takes the detail and it projects it onto your model um, I suggest you don't do this with anything that isn't similar in shape and really the best way to do this is to keep um, subdividing projecting and subdividing because what happens is if you go straight to the high subdivision and then and then project polygons will shoot off into basically into nowhere because they don't quite meet the spectrum and ZBrush doesn't really know what to do with them. But you can sort of see we're getting uh, this would be the last projection because we're at 700k. And, and you can see that now we have our model which has good topology as you can see and does in fact have the detail and obviously it's not perfect. Um, I believe it's better in 4R, 4R6, I'm not exactly sure. But what we can do with this now is, now that we have our low poly model, we can go into Z plugin, UV master, and then we can unwrap this. And now, what UV master does is it creates UV maps um, of your model without, once again, going to another program. It's all within ZBrush, and I don't know, it's so much... It works a lot better in your workflow if you can stay in one program. So, if you go into new um, texture map, you can go new from masking. No, not new. 
new from UV map, my bad. And you can see we have UVs. Now, this is a mess of UV. You can see there's a line going down the middle, and then the head is its own separate separate portion. So what we can do is, there's a few things we can do. We can go, go back in here and enable control painting, and you'll get this option. And the way around this is to go back into it and work on clone. So what this does is it just takes the lowest uh, poly count of that model or the lowest subdivision and just opens it up in a new document. And what you do from here is you would take something that um, you can paint with and you would go back and enable control painting. And let's say I want a seam, right? Um, this isn't working. Let me try it with my pen. All right, so let's say you wanted a seam right here. So we draw a seam in. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, and we can do another one here. Uh, you can, if you view your map before, you have the general idea of where you want them. Um, any joints, I would assume, would be good for your model. Um, as you can see right here, I'm writing. Uh, I'm just, it's really simple. Um, as opposed to uh, going to something like Maya and where you have to reconstruct the polygons, you can also create UV maps. This does it simply with an algorithm, which is very helpful, and especially in a workflow where you say you're working with a client or such and you need to get something done. Uh, this does, in fact, help a lot. So now we've drawn out where we want our UV maps to be or our seams in this case. So I'm just gonna finish it up right here. And that should be good. And if not, there's another method which I will show you after this. So let's go to unwrap. It's gonna take a few seconds. It's it's pretty efficient. Um, now that that's done, let's go to flatten so we can see our UVs. And as you can see, it's, it's a pretty good UV. Um, you don't, there's no overlapping, which is good. Um, the the polygons, the way you see them, is not um, disrupting the polygon counts. So it's not the way it works is when it's projected onto the actual model, it'll come out clean, so it's not a mess. And basically, that's that's some good UVs. I don't know how to put it. Um, another way you could do it is um, with poly groups, but it'd be the same thing. I would make this a poly group. Um, you know, just, I'll just I would make this a poly group. Um, I'll make this one, and basically, then you would go to Z plugin again and go from poly groups um, as opposed to control painting. And it's simple as that. Now, if you're working on your clone, the way to get this back onto your model is to go down here, copy UVs, go back into this. And now I'm just going to change my material again so you know it's different. And load in six. Um, what you do now is go back into C plugin and paste UVs. Now, when we do our UV check, texture map, UV map, you can see we have some good UVs. And now I'm going to show you a little. It's not really a secret or any by any sense in the mean but it definitely is a helpful tip um as once you're done poly painting um you're extracting your normals and displacement map i'm just going to create this displacement map as you now we have the clone displacement map and this brings it over into our alpha channel and what we can do from there is load up a um uh, a plane and i'm going to make my document size uh um, nope, uh, 2040 by 2040, I believe is the size. And I'm just going to zoom out. What? Uh, resize. Yes. Whoops. All right. And edit. Now I'm going to go back out and zoom out again. Now that we have the perfect square, what we can do is make this a poly mesh 3D. <coughs> Increase the subdivisions up until around uh, a million or so polygons. You can take it to the seventh, but it doesn't really 
and it doesn't help you that much. And what we can do from here is <clears throat> basically take our displacement map and project that detail onto um onto this plane. And from that, we can um, just basically like multi passes. So you can see I can create a gorilla um, pass, and this would act as a um, sort of a layering system for um, for your UV map. And I'm just gonna pull up a, uh, a quick example of this. Um, I don't have it open, so let me let me pause and I'll find this. All right, so whoops. Uh, so right now we're looking at the uh, the UV map of a different model I did. Um, it's of another character, uh, Kimimaru from Naruto. May understand what that is, but if not, it doesn't matter. And basically what I've done is I've created a series of passes using uh, different filters or um, different map caps with um, that displacement method. And as you can see, I go from this, which is the plain poly paint with a not so tight specular, so it's kind of a mess to um, a semi-decent looking UV map. Um, I did a little extra. Um, I have obviously these color corrections, which basically is just to brighten what would be bone and then um, to darken certain areas. But for the sake of tutorial, I'll go through um, I'll go through uh, what each one does. So starting with this, this is um, just an overlay layer to um, darken certain areas. Um, I believe I used the mask of what would be bone. I, I did miss a little bit, or I believe those are shoes. So I have the mask in case I don't want any um, of the bone to receive that texture. Um, then I wasn't happy with the color, so I did darken it and then add a hue and saturation. Um, basically just uh, darkened him a little bit and brought out the saturation. And next we have what was I believe a cavity map and then I just set that on multiply and lower down the opacity um, here is some a metal texture which um, acted as some specular um, we have gorilla which added the detail which is very subtle but um, I believe it looks better with it and as opposed to without it you can see there's more specular and shadows that does help and this next map, um, it's another specular, but I only applied it to what would be the body. Um, some AO, which was exported with the maps. And then this is nothing. And then obviously the color correction, more color correction, which I feel brought it all together. And then that's, that's pretty much it. Then I exported it and brought it into uh, Cinema 4D or Maya, depending on your preference, or 3ds Max. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this. Um, it's very simple, but it's very overlooked because it's such a simple thing. Man, not many people make a tutorial like this. So I hope if you do use ZBrush, you learn something. If not, comment down what you would like me to do. Uh, and that's really it, guys. Thanks for watching.